3.0%. That's how fast the U.S. economy was growing. This is the first reading on the third quarter gross domestic product. It's our biggest measure, most important measure of how the overall U.S. economy is doing. The expectation was for 2.5% thereabouts, but to get 3% and see that nice three number in the front of GDP growth. It is kind of exciting. If you want the U.S. to do well, joining us now is one of our favorite guests of all time, Macro Majors President <laughs> Stephanie Pomboy. Stephanie, just your initial take on this 3% reading. How is it that we're growing at a 3% growth? Wow. Well, well I, you know, I'm surprised. I want to see the details in terms of the inventory contribution versus the consumer spending, because obviously what we care about is seeing strong spending rather than just some inventory build. And I know that um, at least the Atlanta Fed and their forecast had built in almost a full percentage point contribution from inventories, largely due from the, uh, the hurricanes that we saw. So that will be interesting to look at. But as you know, you, you know, my concern has been that there's been a broad deceleration in growth, not that the wheels are coming off, but that, you know, we've been generally churning slot downward to sideways a little bit since 2015. Um, I've seen slowing tax receipts. Actually, Treasury tax receipts are now down year on year, which is a recession reading. Wow. So there's some things that just don't square with the strength of the headline numbers. And I'm very interested to find out, you know, what the details here are. The other thing we're seeing that's a little disturbing and kind of conflicts with the strong headline spending and GDP numbers are the rise in delinquencies. So mm -hmm. there are a couple things out there that have me concerned. Um, and this is why I'm so anxious to see the tax cuts come through, because we need right. to pass this baton from monetary to fiscal policy and get some more zhuzh into the economy. Do you think that this 3% though gives Congress more, that they think the economy is doing okay, there's right. no urgency. That's my That's worry. That's the danger, exactly. I mean, I'm since I'm looking at things like tax receipts and delinquencies and, you know, just slowing consumer discretionary spending, I'm worried. You know, I'm sitting here biting my nails. Like, they've got to get this done fast. Well, I'm glad you brought up tax receipts because I'm extremely worried because the Fed keeps saying we haven't had inflation, but they're looking at the wrong indicators. Look at asset inflation. It's right. been unbelievable. Look at health care. The price of health care has gone up exponentially. The price of getting a college education has gone up significantly. So when they're talking about the PCE and they're talking about CPI, those are all just like, you know, areas for them to deflect. Asset inflation, they've even been worried about. Now, do you see headwinds coming about? Because now we're at, I'm looking, we're at session highs for the dollar, 10-year yields are going up. Right. I mean, do you see that this could be the only two-quarter GDP print that we get at, that's good, given the headwinds? Well, this is what I worry about. You know, I'm glad you talk about the rising cost of health care and tuition. Housing expenses have gone up a lot in the last couple of years. So if you strip out housing and health care, you know, that's 40% of the increase in consumer spending. So discretionary spending, as I said, you know, has been slowing. And actually, people are now relying more on credit cards and transfer payments to you know, cover their everyday necessities. So I think it's a major issue. And then you've got the Fed doing QT, which isn't going to help in terms of, you know, tightening credit conditions, et cetera. So this is why, again, I come back to the urgency of really getting these tax cuts through and getting some relief, because right now, clearly, the trend toward decelerating growth, notwithstanding this current GDP, the, the third quarter, um, is you know, going to continue. This is the best six-month stretch since mid-2014 for the economy in terms of GDP. And the Commerce Department said that it, this was particularly interesting or strong because of the hurricanes, okay. that we were still able to grow at 3% for the quarter. And this is the first reading. It could be revised downward right. or upward. Right. But again, it was pr particularly spectacular for that reason because of the, the weather. Yeah. I mean, I think the things to watch going forward is what's happening, obviously, on the consumer spending front. Like you said, you know, I think some of the data, actually, the monthly data have been surprisingly strong over that hurricane period. We did see yesterday retail inventories were much weaker, though, and you saw auto inventories, thankfully, you know, post their largest decline since the recession. And that's sort of the silver lining of this hurricane is that you might have provided all these producers some relief on the inventory front because they've been dealing with very yeah, high inventory. Yeah, here we go. Uh, consumer rate. spending gain was driven by motor vehicles as Americans replaced cars oh. damaged by the storms. And then services spending, by contrast, slowed to its weakest hmm. since 2013. So that goes into your kind of discretionary spending outside of right. housing and health care. What about inventories in the... 
Yeah, I'm pulling that up. While you're doing that, can I ask real quick about the Fed and the plan to unwind the uh, balance sheet for the Fed? What risks do you see uh, in terms of future GDP from that? Well, I think we're a credit dependent economy. You know, I always talk about how it's an a car basically and credit is the fuel that gets it going and we've actually reached the point where we rely we're getting worse mileage basically we need more gas in the tank to go each additional GDP mile so if you're gonna start to reduce the supply of fuel in the economy the credit fuel which is what the feds basically gonna do the natural tendency of the economy is gonna be to grow at a slower rate um, and we're already you know, in this deceleration phase. And the interesting thing on that, too, is bank credit, total bank lending, has already rolled over sharply ahead of QT. So we haven't begun to see the real uh, Fed tightening, and yet credit conditions are already starting to slow down. So these, again, you know, just underscore why I'm really focused on the tax cuts, because, it, you know, we've got to pass the baton from monetary monetary to fiscal policy and right now you know it's a nail-biter yeah and trade and inventories yeah. added a combined 1.14 oh. to the growth okay yeah it was supposed to add about 0.8 so that's yeah. a substantially larger add yeah so real final sales then were uh one six yeah so that that's not you know that's down yeah. from two nine last quarter Whoa. that's a pretty big slowdown so anyway <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we'll get those tax cuts and we'll yeah. get some juice back in the uh, real economy. In the yes. real economy, that would be nice. Stephanie, it's so good to see you always. Because you, you all, every time we talk to you, it's you always tell us something that we don't know, and, it, and it's just a different. Well, that's my job. Cycle. I think you know. Let's focus on the stuff that a lot of, people aren't focused on. Some people, some people kind of tell you what you've already heard 800 oh. times. Not you, <laughs> Stephanie Pomboy. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Have a great weekend. Well, the White House celebrating great news today. The U.S. economy grew at 3 percent in the third quarter, the strongest such showing for, the, for that quarter since 2014. On top of that, consumer spending, well, by the way, was the main engine of growth for this one, 2.4 percent. Uh, by the way, consumers were unusually optimistic, in fact, and they expect great things ahead. You combine that with strong labor markets, unemployment at 16 percent, record highs in the stock market. And the economy continues to look very strong under President Trump. Here with me now to discuss uh, David Bonson, CIO of Bonson Group of Hightower and author of Crisis of Responsibility. And back with us, Maya McGinnis. David, i got to start with you. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I tweeted out first thing this morning, as soon as the uh, GDP numbers, I tweeted out a chart. And I got a lot of pushback. Well, Trump doesn't deserve credit. What has he done? This is Obama's economy. And what I don't think people understand is when you unlock animal spirits, is, which is what I think happened on November 8th, they take on a life of their own. Yeah, there's two elements here that are really important. If it had just been one quarter, I was myself skeptical after Q2. I said, okay, we had a print here. Let's wait and see. But this is a 3% print, Charles, with the hurricanes. They were expecting a 20, 40 basis point drag on GDP. So this is very strong. And there hasn't been a legislative victory yet. This is pre-tax reform. Your animal spirits thesis is right, but also the deregulation. That is working its way through the economy. And I think that I follow the energy sector very closely. The CapEx and business investment projects they're approving at an executive branch level is through the roof. These are projects, by the way, that mean these are multi-billion dollar projects for the most part. And multi-year, multi-billion right. dollar projects. Right. All right, so Maya, the big thing now is, and I'm not sure, but I, when I hear these politicians, particularly Republicans, saying, hey, this whole thing will go up in a puff of smoke if we don't pass tax reform and other things, I feel like it's an unnecessary scare tactic because I think this is something that the administration wants to see continue, and if they don't mess with it, it will. Well, I do think the point that the confidence, the, it's sort of anticipatory confidence that's really driving the economy right now, and it's working very well, and I agree with the point. I sort of didn't think this was going to be sustained in the first couple quarters, and this appears to be more lasting than people would have expected. And so I actually do think now we're going to have to start to deliver, and we're going to have to see some real policies that will actually back up this confidence about being able to grow the economy in a, sustained, in a sustained way. That's why I think getting tax reform done is going to be immensely important. 
um, and I'd, I'd reemphasize that getting it done in the right way where it doesn't balloon the national debt right. is going to be critical for the long-term sustainability of the growth numbers because you can grow the economy for two or three quarters but what you really want to do is be able to grow it for year after year after year and so that means we need policies that are focused on the long term not just short term boosts and that's where looking at the details of these policies that they do need to pass will be important i think the pressure is on that tax reform succeed does it have to succeed by thanksgiving no i think those da dates are uh, those right. deadlines are absolutely artificial i agree with you on that i'm not sure why they do that the political pressure uh, just means there's the potential for failure. Let's get tax reform done, but let's get it done right. right. And obviously, adding months onto that, if that's working out the details and improving the tax bill in a way that will grow the economy more, well worth it. David, um, you know, we talk about these surveys all the time. To me, uh, the best survey that I saw this week was the, in the form of Caterpillar's earnings. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> North America, to your point, through the roof. These aren't frivolous things. You know, this, you know, this is the kind of investment, durable goods, business investment, bottomed in, Mar in May, has come on like gangbusters since then. So there's clearly some wind in this in these cells. And it's in the small business side and with it out, co with corporate America, you're seeing it in the earnings. You mentioned Caterpillar. The whole industrial sector this uh, earnings season's had very positive results. I agree with Maya. You want sustainable results. And that's where a GDP print on a particular quarter is good. But what becomes great is when you have an environment that unlocks animal spirits, that leads to sustained capex. For all the stock market move under the Obama administration, we didn't have a lot of capital expenditure no, investment. Right, right. That's what will lead to a sustainable market. Both you and I agree that uh, there was some skepticism on both of your parts, and you had a 3.1 and now a 3% uh, print. Does that also underscore the fact that maybe we don't have to live in a, in a sub 3% uh, period? Because people were starting to wonder. We only had a couple 3% three, uh, 3 years under uh, President Bush, so uh, American capitalism had let people down for a very long period of time. Well, the belief that we are in a permanently stagflationary or, or uh, this kind of secular stagnation, to use Larry Summers' term, always comes from left-wing people, Charles. They believe that the capitalism is limited in what it can do. I disagree with the thesis. But it is uh, true that if we were going to have tax reform that blew out the deficit, which we don't have to have, right. that that would not be as permanently sustainable. We need all of the above. I've only got uh, a couple of seconds here, but I do want yeah. uh, to, to know... Should people now be hopeful? Is 4% achievable? Is 5% achievable? Because it really sounded like a pipe dream, even on the campaign trail. Yeah, I am very optimistic about capitalism, but what I'm also realistic about is aging. Uh, we are all getting older as a country, and the pr challenge we face in terms of economic growth is that the labor market uh, many of those people are moving sure. into retirement, sure. and that's a number that we can't change. And we, and so, we also have that, and that re is reflected, too, with the skills gap uh, situation, which we the, continue to hear is a major the problem. The skills Guys, gap, yep, and the it, entitlement program. So there's a lot we still have to work on. But Got to let it go there. Thank you both thanks. very, very much.